Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. So today I'm sitting here recording with my matcha latte. I've got a little maple syrup, cinnamon, cashew milk, and some delightful matcha that my friend brought me from Japan. I like matcha, but my preference is coffee. However, I am weaning myself off of coffee. So I had five ounces this morning, and then I'm not having any more coffee today, which truthfully is really sad. I really love having coffee. For me, it's not about the caffeine hit. It's about the ritual and the taste. I buy really, really good coffee, locally roasted, Sweet Bloom, Corvus, Middle State. These are all really amazing coffee roasters in Colorado. And it's just like nothing else. If it's bad coffee, I don't want to drink it. But if it's good coffee, I don't want to stop drinking it. Anyway, why am I cutting coffee out? Well, a couple of reasons. The first one is that I actually have hit like a natural energetic high for myself lately. And when I have coffee, I've noticed that it puts me too high, too over the edge. And I end up getting dizzy and feeling really destabilized. And I don't need that. If I have my own natural rush of energy, especially in the morning, Coffee isn't helping me. It's just something that I enjoy. And then the second reason is I actually did a hormone panel recently. And oh my gosh, it's so interesting. My hormones are a little bit whacked up right now. And one thing that the woman who I'm working with had suggested was cutting way back on coffee. And so I'm transitioning from coffee to matcha, where I'll probably only have a cup of matcha a day. And maybe I'll be having dandelion root tea like I did this morning in place of my morning coffee. So that's why I'm cutting it out. And truthfully, it just feels like the right time. I've always ebbed and flowed with my coffee. I'll cut it out for a few months, then I'll start drinking it. And I very much believe in following your natural rhythm as it comes to consumption of food and beverages. So right now it's definitely time for me to wean off coffee and I'm doing it willingly because I know it's what my body wants for me, what my inner voice wants for me. So that's my update right now. And this week's episode is I have had so many ideas lately about what I want to talk about on the podcast and it's getting a little overwhelming because I need to record all of these episodes, but today we are talking about being present, living in the present moment, and this is definitely another one of those episodes that I will want to come back to and record again because this is my Dana January 2020 insights and thoughts about being in the present moment as I've contemplated this recently in life, and When life strikes, I know there is a lot of upset energy recently with Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and quite a few other people, children, fathers, passed away on a helicopter crash the other day. And I know this always jolts people into feeling that they need to like take life by the horns. So I talk about this a little differently in this week's episode. So without further ado, here's the episode. Happy Woo Woo Wednesday. I'm so grateful to be here with you today. And as I mentioned in the intro, we are talking about living in the present moment. So here's what I've been contemplating. I recently had a coffee date (laughs) with a really good friend of mine and teacher. And I was telling her how the studio that I used to teach at, that I trained in Bowspring at, 
that I practiced at that was a huge, huge, huge part of my life for many years, it's closed down. And pretty much the two owners of the studio, they have left and they're no longer teaching the practice in Denver. And the other teachers have all dissipated, myself included, and we're all doing our own thing. But I was reflecting with this teacher how, oh my gosh, there was such a magical period of alignment when I had just started teaching. I was done with my training. I would go to her class every Saturday morning with her at the time boyfriend and her mom and her husband at the time. And we would, after class, go and have coffee and juice next door at the local coffee shop. And it was such a joyful, beautiful time that is locked in time in my mind. Because in many ways, all of that kind of dissolved and blew up (laughs) as sometimes it needs to happen. And I was telling her that in a different version of myself, I would look back at those times with sadness because all of that is gone. More than gone. It's never to be had again. And I then started thinking about how many people that I talk to that really live as if the glory days, the good old days are behind them. And I could have felt that way about Vital. I mean, man, it was a beautiful time. And I recognize that everything that happened afterward needed to happen. The studio needed to close down. I needed to step away from teaching in that format altogether. And I needed to step away even from my mentors and teachers at the studio so I could step into my own power, my own clarity, and my own wisdom and really teach what I've integrated through my own practice, not just teach what I'm told to teach. So I recognize the value of that time. And I also can look at it now and say, you know what, that wouldn't serve me anymore anyway. So we spend so much time looking at the past, looking at the good old days and thinking, gosh, everything was so good then. I was so much stronger then. I was healthier then. You know, I had a bigger community then. Everything that you think, anything that you think, it tends to glorify back then, those good old days. But we can't forget that the brain has this really interesting bias where We see what's wrong in the now, and we also tend to only remember what was good in the past, if that's what we're wanting to see. But even back then, life wasn't all perfect. Just because you were healthier, maybe you had a really complicated relationship with food and you thought you were healthier because you ate, quote, cleaner, right? Or maybe you had a really strong community But maybe that community also had a lot of drama that was kind of tiring for you. And maybe you were really productive back then and you worked really well, but maybe that's because you were disconnected from your own internal source of energy. So my perspective and my offering to you all is, what if the good old days are just good days of the past? that served a purpose so that we can live now in the present. Because if we're spending all of our time thinking back on how things used to be, we are denying ourselves of what things are now. We are denying ourselves the most precious thing that we have. And that is literally now and now and now. And now it is the moment we are in. It is the time we are in. It is what we are experiencing right now. And how sad to totally diminish what we have right now by thinking about how much better things used to be and not honoring all the growth and all the expansion and all that has come from when you used to be whoever you used to be. That is, it's like saying that we need to 
be forever stuck in time. And that totally denies the value of growth. And I laugh, not to get political, but the whole campaign from the Trump administration was make America great again. And it totally was riding on this idealistic vision and version of the past that was only looking at, supposedly, right, what was, quote, good. But it did not take into account all the growth that we have done as a society and all of the stuff that was going on back then that also wasn't good. It's just not fair to our minds. It's not fair to ourselves to look at the past for only what was good about it and think that that is what we wish we had now. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. And since it doesn't work that way, let's stop resisting it and start stepping into this present moment. Let's start stepping into feeling so much gratitude and joy for what was and for how far we've come since then. Or even if you've stumbled and what you feel is a falling backwards, it's never linear like that. I was at a Tibetan cranial and reflexology session yesterday, and I was talking to Amy, who does the work on me. She's just so talented. And she said my left side of my body was holding a lot more than my right. And I said to her, wow, that's so interesting because in the past, every time I've come in, it's always been my right side of my body that holds more. And how interesting, it feels like my body is now jumping to the other side so that it can find its balance. We don't just go from one extreme to pure balance. Sometimes you have to go to the other extreme before your body can regulate itself. And it's the same with our progression and our growth as human beings. Like you might learn a lesson and then take it too far in the other direction. And during your good old days, you were definitely learning lessons that now you're implementing and you're stumbling and trying to find your way as a human. But why waste our time and energy wishing things were what they used to be. What's the point in that? The only thing you can do is shift what you're doing now. So if you're sad that you were healthier back then, we'll do something now. But don't be sad and don't hate on your body for what it is now because it's gotten you this far, hasn't it? (laughs) You're here, aren't you? And that takes me to this beautiful moment of, being present. And this has come up a lot recently on different calls that I've been on and especially with the passing of the people in the helicopter crash with Kobe Bryant is for me, whenever someone who is healthy, wealthy, and, you know, successful loses their life, it shakes me. And not because of anything. Like I I didn't know Kobe and it's not that he's more important than the other people on the plane, but there's definitely this sense that these celebrities, these, these people are kind of untouchable. And it reminds you like he has everything going for him and he lost his life. Oh, whoa. But you know what he had? He had a family, you know, he had a daughter that was with him and apparently, you know, some great connections. I don't know. I don't really follow this. But what I do know is I like to consider how I'm interacting with people and myself on a daily basis, how I'm being in the present moment, how present I can be and just be. For me, I don't go to that place of like, I have to live my life you know, to the fullest, I can't waste any moment because that in its own is kind of this fear-based lack response to how life is lived. Because ultimately, if you're here right now, if you're present and if you're following your heart and your guidance, there's nothing wrong with not being a thousand percent productive every day. But what if you were a thousand percent present? What if you are here in your heart, in your body, 
and feeling everything that comes through, feeling the love for friends and family and partners and pets fully, expressing yourself fully. I mean, to me, that's a way to not hold back is like, if you can express yourself and show up and be like, this is me. To me, that's way more important than what you do, what you check off your list every day. But can you be yourself? Can you authentically and fully spread and share from your heart? Can you do that now? Because here's what's beautiful. Then you'll look back at now and know it was the best time. And now is the best time. And now is the best time. And every time is the best time because you're here. You are here. John woke up this morning and he said, today is a good day to be alive. I'm like, yeah, it is a good day to be alive. Even if it's a hard day, it's still a good day to be alive. And right now in this moment, it's so beautiful that he and I can have that conversation. And right now in this moment, it's so beautiful that I can sit here and share that with you on the podcast. And it doesn't mean my moment with him was more precious than this moment with you or that my moment a year ago was more precious than what will come in another year. It's all precious. It's all beautiful. And if we can stop judging the now and wishing we were further ahead in the future or missing what we were in the past, we can really embrace who we are and who we are becoming that can only be shaped from now and now and now, from moment to moment, from presence and awareness and being ourselves, not holding back and enjoying what we can, riding the wave of life, riding the highs, riding the lows, riding the days of missing caffeine, but I also know that when I'm on the other side, when I'm off caffeine, I'll be like, man, this feels really good. I may miss the ritual of having my coffee every morning, but do I miss feeling dizzy and having too much energy that I can't control? Probably not. I'll embrace the new now. And that also doesn't mean that later I won't have coffee again and I won't judge myself for having coffee. Do you see the process? It's being more present, experiencing what you have to experience now, riding the energy wave, riding the emotional wave, riding the ups and downs and knowing that this is all the process. This is it. It doesn't get better later. It wasn't better in the past. It is. The only thing that makes it better or worse is your perception of it. Making more money, while it may make a lot of things easier, it doesn't suddenly fix everything, especially the things that are inside. What do we talk about? What do we talk about on this podcast? Doing the inner work. That's what we have control over in every moment, especially when we're dealing with external circumstances. What can we do right now? We can take a breath. We can pause. We can say, here's what I'm feeling and feel those emotions. We can decide to want to feel better. We can decide to look at something from a different perspective and see the lesson, the gratitude, the joy. Or we can decide to throw a tantrum. (laughs) No judgment here, but that's you. You get to decide. You get to decide how you're shaping your future right now in this moment. For the present moment is all we have. Everything else just lives in the mind. Isn't that crazy? The past is a memory and we all know if you've ever had a sibling and you are remembering a past experience together with your sibling or a friend, how differently they remember things than you do? Because it's perception. It's perspective. Their experience is filtered through their lens in the present moment and then everything that happened after that. So is yours. So a memory is a memory. 
the future, the things you project that you think will get better, that you hope for, that you worry about, that you fear, that's all in your mind. That's a projection. You don't know. You can't predict the future. Why predict and worry about something that you can't even do anything about right now? When you can start worrying about it now, when you can do something right now, do it. And if you can't, release it. And focus on those feelings that you want to feel now. Focus on going inward, asking your inner voice, asking the questions. What do I need to know right now? What can I do in this moment? How can I release what's holding me back? How can I release holding on to the past and glorifying it? For it was not only glory. But that's how I'm choosing to remember it, which means I can also choose to see this moment as glory and the next and the next and continue to show up for myself as I am, where I am, how I am right now so that in the future, I also see this moment as beautiful. Thank you so much, as always, for listening If this resonates, I'd love to hear from you. You can comment on the posts on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans or even send me a direct message. I love to chat and communicate and these are the kind of conversations that I love to have. I don't have the answers. (laughs) I just have a lot of thoughts and feelings and contemplations and this is an outlet that I love to share it. So I love and an open to hearing your thoughts and feelings and contemplations as well. And in the meantime, I hope that this gives you something to reflect on for your week, for your days. And if you have something that you're glorifying, a version of the past that you keep trying to get back to, remember that would be backpedaling. If you're trying to get back to a version of you or a situation that once was, you're inherently losing ground and going backwards. So how can you look at that as inspiration and use it with this new version of you, the version who's grown and learned and expanded and stumbled and use that now to start to create the next version of who you are becoming. Have a beautiful day, my friends. Sending love until next week. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans or find me on my website at alignful.com.